Well, hello, welcome to the channel, and thanks for joining me. So we've got an unboxing video today. I actually know what it is for a change, but it's a Goliath box. So I'm in the big room again today to open this one. So apologies if it's a bit echoey, but let's take a look and see what we've got. It's certainly been very well packaged. There was never any danger of it arriving broken in all that bubble wrap, which is fantastic. So here we go then. So we've got ourselves a Hitachi TRK 8800E. And you may have just seen me inadvertently peel some tape away from the speaker grill there. I've noticed that it actually contains one of the sliders, which will be this one here, the recording volume one, obviously is a little bit on the loose side. It should live on here like so. But anyway, there we go, that's on now. I guess he couldn't figure out how to get it on properly. So anyways, um, here we are then, as I say, it's actually TRK 8800E. And this particular one is in pretty dirty, grimy condition. There's a little bit of a story with this. Um, these are quite, well, quite rare, I've got to be honest, and relatively high-tech, as it were, from the TRK range. They've got the soft-touch controls for the cassette mech just there. It looks very similar, actually, to things like the, um, the TRK 8190 and 8290, those sorts of things. I've just noticed, actually, another slide has come off there, so I will check the packaging in a little minute to see. Ah, here it is. It's actually on the floor <laughs> i just literally found that as i was talking to you guys so i'll get that one on as well there we go right here so as i was saying there aren't too many of these about and it's an interesting one because i had one come in already and there were a few issues with it namely for whatever reason the controls here weren't working on the, the actual switches for the master function and i think the band selector didn't work and i don't know yet and i've not had it apart but I'm thinking that for some reason the actuators aren't connected to the board at the back. So I thought, hmm, someone's obviously been in there. Have they robbed any parts or just didn't know how to put it back together? Also, there were a couple of switches and stuff like that missing, like switch tips missing. So I was saying recently during another unboxing that this, I used it as an example. I'd put it on top of a massive box for something else that had come in. And as I had it down, I noticed that the headphone jack was missing and the whole board, the headphone board wasn't wasn't present. And I was complaining in that video that I'd had the opportunity to buy a broken up one for fairly sensible money. And I passed it up because I didn't think I'd need a spare. And would you believe it? I think literally the next day, one came up for sale at a fairly sensible price. So I've taken this one on board and the idea is we're gonna make a good one out of the two. So anyway, here it is. Now, on initial inspection, it looks pretty intact. I'm just checking. Oh, I heard a little rattle then, actually. Um, well, let me just give it a quick rattle. Mm, maybe. There may be something broken in there. They may not. We'll see. The handle's intact. The whole thing's a bit grubby. But both the aerials are present, and they've got the original black tips on there. Uh, notwithstanding the bits that were taped and fell on the floor, but basically all of the knobs and switches are indeed present. I think one of the other the other one I've got actually has an issue with a snapped switch, and the only way you can actually fix that it's not a switch tip issue. You've actually got to go in and get the secondary board from the top there and actually replace the switch, resolder a whole new switch and everything in there. So that one's going to require some work. Anyway, this one apart from being really filthy isn't too bad it's got a crack in the tuner window there again eh, not massive crack to be fair it's not too bad we could fabricate a new one but actually that's not too bad i think we can live with it it's generally just really grubby let's have a look so the tuning dial does operate the dial cord is okay and um yeah we'll see let's does it eject let's have a look right okay well Oh, there's a bonus tape. What have we got? Precocious Brats featuring Kevin and Perry. Big girl. Hmm, not familiar with that particular release, but it's a Dolby, 
a Dolby tape there. Might be worth us using as a demo. That'll probably turn up at some point during a demo. Anyways, so inside it looks fairly clean. You know, it's got the general dirt and grime and what have you in there, but the capstan and the pinch roller don't seem too bad, and the head's in pretty good condition, to be fair. Dusty and dirty, of course. DPRS system, of course, on this as well. Let's have a look. Is this going to freeze up on us? You never quite know. These Hitachis are very prone on the pause switch there, just for not releasing, so it may or may not work. Right, okay, so it's not in bad condition. Uh, he says, yeah, ugh, just really needs a clean. It's intact on the back. Uh, let's have a look what state are the battery terminals in. They're pretty clean. It's just really dirty. Needs a darn good clean and a scrub. All right. Okay, so nothing really to report on the outside. So let's plug it in then. I've got a, I've got a power lead it's handy. Right, get the aerials up. Not the best reception in this room, but it's okay. What's quite nice actually, just like the side, is the uh, original stickers on the cassette door there, that's cool. Right, so, the light works, I can see the light working. You can see that just across there, and there as well. So let's go on to, so he's on radio. We'll go on to FM and try and tune the channel. Yeah, not very good radio to be honest. Not very good radio. Right. You may wonder what I'm doing here, but I'm literally just seeing what works and what doesn't. Yeah, so is that a power issue? Oh yeah, yeah, power issue there I think because now the light's not working either. You hear that? Yeah, died now. Totally died now. There is still the AC power light on. Right, okay, so what have we got? If I put it on timer standby, it's okay. If I put it onto mains power, it kills it. So we've got an issue there with the power supply probably. Uh, not quite sure what's going on quite with it yet. All right. There's shortwave. Medium wave. And we might have long wave as well. Maybe not. We might find something later. Yeah. FM is not very good, so we'll have to have a look at the FM. Well, let's have a look at the tape then, as well, while we're here. So turn the volume back down. I'm going to put the aerials down for safety as well. Don't want to risk breaking those. The aerials are actually very shiny. Normally, they're all pitted and corroded by now, but these ones are in decent condition. Right, what's going on here? Yeah, okay. Let's go to tape then. Right, now I can see the Dolby light is, is coming on. Not as bright as it should be. Might be power issues with this thing, I think. Right, let's have a look. Let's see if we can open it again. And I'm going to be brave now and put the tape in. See what happens. Yeah, 
Oh, the solenoid's kicked in. No, it's not. It's killed it. Stop. No, nope. fast forward. Let's have a look. Hmm. Okay. All right. I suspect. I suspect. Let's have a look. It's hard to see, to be honest, with the cassette door on the front. You can't really tell what's going on. The belts have probably gone, to be honest. But it also feels like it was sucking all the power out as well. So might be issues with that to be honest with you right let's have a look back to radio yeah I think it's just let's have another go yeah yeah it just seems to whenever you try and sort of put it onto mains onto the mains power the primary power there it does seem to be sucking it's sucks the life out of it so there's probably a an issue maybe the capacitors aren't holding their charge or something's going on with that probably needs looking at something's something's arise somewhere but anyway here it is i'm just thinking out loud at the moment whilst i scan it over for anything obvious obviously we can't try the dprs system because I think the belts aren't working anyway. We press play. So you go back to play again. Uh, definitely on tape. Play. Yeah. If I put it onto timer and play. Uh, seeing if I can get the, yeah, the DPRS. I can get that to come on. Goes up to nine tracks in advance auto rewind facility on this as well i've forgotten about that so that's pretty cool all right so basically nothing much is happening with this needs a good clean needs a lube needs new belts but there's an issue i think with the power needs a darn good just keep saying this but it does really need a good clean it's grotty um okay so it is what it is i think we can do something with it and certainly with the other one that we've got i'm sure we can make a really nice one between the pair of them so there's not a great deal much to show you guys today. I just wanted to unbox it. My, my fingers are really sort of feel quite grimy now. This, everything's covered in this just dirt and dust and, and stuff. It came from a house clearance anyway. So it's been sat probably in a loft or in the back of a shed or something for a long time. Needs a proper good clean. But I think fundamentally it's pretty much there. It's mostly intact and it's totally original. I think it just needs a proper going through. We'll strip it down, give it a good service, go through the electronics, go through the mecha mechanical parts. And yeah, we'll be all right with this, I think, one way or another. So do please stay tuned and hit the notification bell for updates. Got a bunch more stuff coming your way very soon, so do keep an eye out. But in the meantime, do stay safe. And thanks very much for watching. All the best for now. Bye-bye.